It kind of feels like the software industry is a little bit cooked right now, especially if you're a junior engineer trying to get a job. It probably almost feels like it's impossible. I want to make a video to talk about my thoughts on it, and you guys can leave a comment below if you guys have something you want to share about you trying to get a job as a junior engineer, just getting to the industry at all. So before we dive into this topic, let's start with a contradiction. Software engineering shortage in the United States. If you go ahead and search this, there's multiple places that say there's a huge shortage of experienced software engineers, right? So this one's saying the Bureau of Labor Statistics indicates a gap in nearly 1.2 million by 2026. This is driven by high demand from technology adoption including mobile devices, AI, customized software, and a slower than needed growth in the workforce. So if this is true, we need to hire more software engineers. Unfortunately, I think most people want to hire very, very high skilled software engineers, which is harder to find, right? So keep that in mind. There's a shortage. We need skilled labor. Now let's move on to some other questions that you could probably ask. Has the industry stopped hiring juniors? According to multiple sources, I asked perplexity for a lot of my research. I think it's a really good application to kind of get some research. It says hiring of juniors has slowed and almost stopped, and it's also highly competitive. So I don't know if you heard the stories or the jokes of people trying to apply to an entry-level software engineering position, and the job posting says you must have like 10 years or 15 years of experience in some type of language or framework that's only been out for like three years. So that's the meme that these positions are basically impossible to get hired for. And then also when you start applying to these positions, Often these automated systems just reject your resume right off the bat or people never give you a callback. And if they do give you a callback, you might go through the rounds of the interview and then you never actually get a offer because they have like a thousand other people who are applying and it's just super competitive. And I think also all these companies, I'm sure there's a lot of additional resource strain that's getting put on them to try to find talent. But I think we're at a point where you have to realize that most junior engineers are just not good. When you hire a junior engineer, you're expecting to train them up. And it might that might take six months, it might take a year, but you expect them to be put on a team with other mid and senior engineers and mentor them so that within six months or a year, they can become productive and start contributing to your code base and add more value than it was with the initial investment to get them up to speed. And I would definitely recommend that we keep on hiring junior engineers because every year that we just don't hire juniors, that's another year of mid and senior engineers that we're not going to create. If we're being realistic, the only way to become a mid and a senior engineer is to get a full-time job doing software engineering. When you get hired, you're doing eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, 52 weeks in a year, plus or minus a couple days for vacation. But beyond that, like there's no way you're going to become a proficient developer just by doing side projects or just by, you know, tinkering with coding every once in a while after work. After you graduate with a computer science degree, I feel like there's an ultimate limit to how long you can stay out of the market before these people eventually just pivot to another industry, right? When you graduate from college, you typically have debts you have to pay, you have other responsibilities and bills that you have to pay. And it doesn't make sense for people to sit there and try to grind leak code and grind all these interview processes just to get their first initial software engineering job. It just doesn't make sense to them. They need to get paid today. And so they're probably gonna pivot to other, other industries and never come back. So I do think that the gap in the juniors and interns in this industry is just going to keep on growing. And I do think this is even worse with AI. Now that we have AI, we have these senior engineers and mid engineers who can basically just, you know, create a lot more value, especially for certain types of projects by just prompting AI, Claude Sonnet 4.5, whatever, and have one developer churn out a lot more features than we used to in the past. And so I guess from a company perspective, it doesn't make sense to hire a junior engineer and try to like get them up to speed when we could just have a senior just churn out a bunch of work anyway. But I do think, like I said, this is going to screw over the whole industry in a couple of years when we don't have any junior engineers who are currently like trying to get good at their craft and make it into mid and senior level engineering. So again, going back to the original conundrum, we have a shortage of software engineers in the United States. These companies are not hiring junior engineers. It's very hard to get a job. It's very competitive. Another good question to ask is, are companies hoping to replace developers with AI? And I think there is a huge bet that AI is going to basically automate or replace a lot of developers. But from what I and many other developers, at least on YouTube, have said, AI is good until it's not. And when it's not good, you actually have to dive into the code and understand large code bases that are highly complex 
and you can't just prompt your way to a solution. I mean, technically you could, I guess if you just have an infinite amount of prompts and credits, you could eventually get to a working solution. But I think a lot of the successes I have seen by using Claude Sonnet and, you know, ChatGPT5 is that I already have the experience. So I know what to prompt AI and I know how to review the code and refactor it using these AI systems to move faster for myself. I don't think a junior engineer or someone who has no idea how to code can make a fully successful product past a certain point. I do think there is a, a ceiling that you'll hit with vibe coding with AI, which I think you will need to hire in some type of consultant or bring in a skilled software engineer who can do the work once you hit that ceiling by just vibe coding systems. But again, if we don't have junior engineers in the industry working, trying to become good and getting the experience working on a team on real software systems, we won't even have these consultants to come in to be able to help these vibe coded apps. Let's read some more interesting facts. So the average time to hire senior developers has doubled since 2020, and many companies can't fill jobs for months. Now, this could be that the hiring process is just bad. Like maybe the people doing these interviews are just expecting too much from people instead of like giving more grace and expecting people to, you know, learn on the job. I think people want to hire someone who comes in day one and can just like do anything. Realistically, that's not going to happen. Most of the people I have seen, it takes a lot of time for them to ramp up on a new project. We're not all robots. We're people. We take time to understand complex code, different workflows. Every company does stuff a little bit different. Every code base is completely different from another code base. And all this takes onboarding time. But I do think that we need to maybe just like chill out on how strict we are in hiring and have maybe a more forward thinking viewpoint on like the industry. Because again, like everyone just wants to make profit. All these companies just want to make short term profit. But if you zoom out, I mean, like the health of your country, the health of the industry in general really depends on getting people up to speed and like training people. Also, with like the current state of everything, I think there's going to be a lot less people even wanting to do computer science. Like I think computer science had one of the highest unemployment rates out of all the other industries. Uh, let me ask that. Is computer science one of the highest unemployment rates of 2025 after graduating? All right, so this is looking bad too. Computer science is now among the highest unemployment rates for college graduates in 2025 with a rate of about 6.1%, significantly above the average for recent graduates and placing it in the top 10 for unemployed majors this year. So with that being said, there's these people getting to college right now. They're probably seeing this research or seeing these statistics and they're like, dude, why am I going to get a degree for an industry that's not even going to hire me? Okay, So I do think this is going to continue to get worse until these companies start realizing that like, hey, maybe we should actually like have a long term vision of the health of this industry, because as more years go by, you'll have more senior engineers who pivot, they'll quit their job, they'll become managers, they'll become business owners. And we're going to lose that skill set of, you know, maintaining these large systems is not easy. You can't just hire a junior and expect them to vibe code solutions on a large code base that's half a million lines of code. Like it's just not going to work. So I really don't know. Like if I was a CEO, I'd probably be hiring juniors and expecting to train them, but I'm not. So I can't really speak on this. All right, here's another one. Some tech hubs show 90% fewer junior posting than 2022. Juniors often need outstanding skills or credentials to stand out. Again, this is a contradiction. How do you expect the junior engineer to have outstanding skills and credentials when they haven't had the time to spend 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year to actually learn these skills. You're not gonna learn these from graduating college. You're not gonna learn these by tinkering on a side project a couple hours here and there. Like these people are expecting to hire like, you know, the ones who sit in their basement all day just coding. And realistically, that's like a such a small percentage of like the really good coders that they need to broaden their uh, outlook on like who they should be hiring, in my opinion. Here's a cool one that you can sleep well at night if you read. Future collapse risk. Analytics warn that sidelining entry-level hires creates risks, creating a talent cliff in three to five years as juniors aren't trained to replace seniors, threatening long-term industry sustainability. This one's funny because if you watch the news and you watch the mentality of like, at least in the United States, people are always like, yeah, we got to be number one. How do you expect to ever be number one if you're not actually training people to understand? Like we're spending... Tons and tons of money, like trillions of dollars, building these data centers, creating new graphics cards to build these AI systems. And again, these AI systems are not perfect. And you have to have good engineers to be able to guide these AI systems like Claude or Sonnet or ChatGPT5 to do the work correctly. 
And I just don't see how this is going to turn out very well for anybody. So I don't know. Maybe we need to have a course correction. I can't do anything. No one's going to listen to me anyway. I'm just a, a random guy on YouTube talking. But all right, AI and developer jobs. AI is dramatically changing the workforce. Companies invested millions in AI, hoping to automate code production, especially simple and repetitive work. However, business leaders and researchers argue AI will augment, not entirely replace developers due to the current limits in creativity, context, and judgment. Yeah. I mean, from what I'm seeing right now, there's a lot of cool use cases for coding with AI, and I've seen it churn out a lot more code than I could in five seconds, then it would take me like 20 or 30 minutes to type. But in reality, like if you get a junior engineer and you give them cursor and you say, hey, build me something, most of them are going to struggle if the code base is large. And there's a lot more that goes into these software systems than just like coding. Coding is just one part of the puzzle, right? Understanding business logic and acceptance criteria communicating with your teammate, collaborating with other people, talking to your clients, verifying what you're building is actually what your users want. There's like a lot more that goes into it. And I do think we we focus so much on like, yes, if we could just like churn out the code faster, it, it doesn't really matter. Like I think we need a more holistic view of this industry or else we're going to basically dig our own graves. Let me ask one more question. What is the average amount of resumes someone sends as a junior before getting a job. Let's see what this is, because, I mean, this is just depressing stuff, honestly. Recent studies and reporting shows that junior and entry-level candidates for software engineering roles in 2025 typically send between 200 to 400 applications before receiving a single job offer, especially if relying on cold apply methods. So I don't doubt this. I mean, I have basically 13 years of experience in the industry doing web development, and even me, I'm applying to some places because even if you're working full time and you like your company, you should still be applying and practicing your interviewing skills because it's a completely separate skill. Sitting in front of someone and like convincing them that they should hire you, that's a skill you have to hone in on. But I've been, you know, applying some places and I get automatic rejections on my resume, which kind of sucks. And I do think there's a lot of like malicious people who are just like mass applying to places with like, you know, AI resume applying, probably fake job applications too, just to kind of flood the system, which isn't helping as well. But it's not a good positive sign with even someone like me. I have a YouTube channel. I feel like I'm pretty successful on YouTube. I'm a pretty good engineer in my opinion. But even me, like to get automatically rejected from my resumes just goes to show that like there's a disconnect between the hiring process to try to find good talent and people who are willing to learn and people who are willing to put in the effort to help out your company and the gatekeeping that kind of goes on behind the scenes. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't really tried applying to that many places, but half of them are like automatic rejections on my resume. And I would assume that that's even worse for someone who has literally no experience in the industry. So yeah, I guess this has been a pretty negative video. I guess my only thing I could recommend is like network. If you're trying to get into the industry, you need to be talking to people. You need to be on Discord channels, trying to connect with people. You need to be on GitHub issues, making your name known. You need to be on Twitter, you know, leaving comments on people's tech posts. You need to be on YouTube, watching people on YouTube and like commenting on them because you never know when you make a connection with someone and then they reach back out to you to like offer you a job. And that's basically what's worked for me. I always know someone who refers me to a company and then I get hired. And then when I want to switch jobs, again, I just know people. They're like, oh, I know Cody's a cool guy. Let's go ahead and hire him. But even strong networking, like it's easier said than done, right? Once you graduate college, again, you have to make money so you can pay off your bills and pay off your college debt if you have any. So you don't have time to go all these meetups and go do this and that and to join discords and to communicate and leave comments on LinkedIn and Twitter and YouTube. Like that requires so much extra time. And at the end of the day, bro, we just want to get a paycheck so we can survive. So I don't know. It's just kind of looking like an uphill battle for a lot of people. And I'd be curious what your opinions are on the job market. Are you a junior? Have you tried applying places? How many places have you applied to? Has it been easy to get a job? Has it been hard to get a job? Or have you completely given up hope? I don't know. Leave a comment below and we can all kind of talk about it. Have a good day and happy coding.